<clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Anikia. I am coming to you with season three, episode six of The Handmaid's Tale called Household. The episode is called Household. Um, I'm on my laptop again, so I'm going to try to play it before I actually upload it, but it took forever for that to upload last week on my phone, like hours. So I'm not going to do that again. Um, and it, it's just much quicker on my laptop. So I plugged my USB cord in to see if it'll, um, if you guys can hear me that way. Cause it seemed, I tried it, I did a test video earlier and it worked that way. So we'll, we'll just see how it, um, goes. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Okay. So this episode, we see that the women, um, are praying for Nicole. And so June is saying that the reason she knows Nicole is still safe, she's still okay, is because as long as those women are praying for her return, then she knows she's not, um, being returned, um, at that point. And so, um, she prays that, she says she prays to, that she prays that their prayers are, um, sh shot down and she prays that Serena comes around and she like understands that Nicole is better, um, where she is. Um, and then, so we, then we see June is putting up groceries and everything, um, at the Lawrence's house, Commander Lawrence home. And he tells her that, can not Martha do that? But anyways, he comes in to really tell her that the Waterfords are going to borrow her. They're acting like she is property. Well, she, they're considering her as property, but like they really refer to her as in this episode, especially as property. So the Waterfords are going to borrow her because commander, um, Fre Fred commander, what's his, anyways, um, commander, what is his name? I hate that can Oh, Waterford. <laughs> Sorry. Commander what brain for Commander Waterford wants to borrow her because um they're going to Washington. He said it's a good move to go to Washington because um Switzer Switzerland, excuse me, because it gets more attention to them. So it's a good move. He was like, it's a smart move to, you know, that 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 makes sense for them to be going there or whatever. Of course, June is not happy about this, but I mean she has no power. What can she do? Um so then they go in, uh, so they, they show June on the, so we see June on the train, um, and she's, she's riding with Aunt Lydia. They have other handmaids and everything there as well. And as they're, uh, going past, you see, um, was that the Lincoln, um, memorial national that you see that they go past, um, that part of Washington. So they've made it to Washington and everything. And um, because the water and again, they're going to Washington because the Waterfords want to do a week of public prayers because they feel like it'll get them more attention to their cause of getting the coal back. It'll force Canada to have to do something. So then we see um, they're going up the escalator. So it's Aunt Lydia and June going up the escalator. And, Ju and Aunt Lydia was like, oh, isn't this so nice? Because it's just everyone in uniform. It looks so you know how when we go out and about and we're shopping at the mall and doing all that kind of stuff, you see people just enjoying themselves. They're talking, they're laughing, they're, you know, on their cell phones, they're eating, they're drinking, they're, sh you know, shopping. They're just, they're with family, they're on dates, they're just enjoying life. This is much more um, uniformed and almost military-like the way, you know, um, the precision in which, you know, everyone is moving as they go through this. And Aunt Lydia says, isn't it beautiful? And June was like, yeah, sure. And June, Aunt Lydia was like, no one likes a sourpuss or, and everything, which, you know what? Quiet as Kelp, they give June a lot of freedom. Like, she has been talking back these last few, you know, these this season. She's been making little snide remarks. She, she gets a lot of freedom. And you really see that in this episode, how much freedom that she's getting, even though she's not, she's not able to do anything with it. Um, but anyways... Um, so then we see, um, Aunt Lydia tells June to go to your spot because she said, this is Washington. Don't be trying to cause trouble. Just go to your spot. So June goes to her spot and they make her kneel down on a red pillow, on a red pillow and everything. And, um, the wa commander Waterford walks up and says, she, um, she's with, like, he even refers to her like she's property. Like she's with us. Um, she's with, it's the way he said it. Like she's with us. And June tries to speak to Serena and Serena don't even, she won't even talk to June. She won't even acknowledge June because she's no, she knows she's wrong, but it is what it is. She just won't acknowledge her. So then we see, um, 
Rita tells June she misses her and, and June is like, I miss you too. And she was like, and Rita tells June, so Rita cannot want this. And Rita's like, she misses the baby. And June is pretty much like, we all miss the baby or whatever. But um, it is what it is as far as that. So Fred, um, okay, so the, okay, so the Waterfords arrive at the Winslows because this is the top, one of the top people in, and they're moving this so fast. Like, the writing is good this season, but they have a lot of gaps in it as well. So, Commander Wilson, uh, no, Winslow is one of the top commanders. But I, but it's, they don't explain things, like how it's going. So, they're in Washington. So, I'm like, well, is Washington separate from Gilead? Like, what is going on? Um, so, if y'all know, tell me in the comments. But, so, they're going to Commander Winslow's house. He invites them in like they literally open the door and walk away. And so they have to, you know, usher their, themselves in. And um, Serena, before, as they're, wa as they're waiting for someone to open the door, so Fred is, he's excited. He's like, this is good. This is an um, opportunity and all that. And she said, Serena's like, for whom? Because she didn't want to stay there. And he was like, it's good that we're staying at the Winslow's. He has so much power and everything that um, th this is a good connection to make. And so anyways, Serena doesn't want to be there, but they go in and they tell them, Serena tells Commander Winslow, thank you for inviting us to your home. And he tells her it was my wife. Like already he's throwing, like he already, he's off top. You could tell he, he doesn't really care either way if they're there or not. He, he's not friendly is what I'm trying to say. He's not that friendly to them, to them. So then, um. So then we see where um, the commander's wife comes. Uh, no, the commander's daughter named Polly comes running to him. She just burst in. And um, as he's talking to, you know, um, Fred and Serena, Rita and um, June are there as well. And so as he's talking to them, Polly burst in and, she, you know, he's like, oh, Polly, you know, he's real. He, he changes when he talks to Polly. And then. A herd of kids come in. I was like, what in the world? It's like, and then his wife comes in. So they have like five or six children. And you could tell that they're not there. I mean, you know they're not theirs, but you could tell they're not theirs because some of their children are biracial. Um, and so Serena sees all this and she's like, oh my goodness. Because you know, they don't see that many children at one time like that, you know, in a household. So then they're um going up the stairs and um and as they're going up the stairs, June looks back and she sees Serena's holding the like the youngest baby and everything. And I'm like, oh, this is not good. This is not good because Serena is just looking like this could be her um, and everything. So then we see um, Rita and June are going up the stairs. They're, they're going to their sleeping quarters. And they're like, they tell June, this is where the handmaid, you'll be sleeping with the handmaid. And Rita and June are like, they got a handmaid because they have six children. And, and Rita's like, well, I guess um, because he's a higher ranking, you know, it's not like they're going to let his family not have money and everything so they can afford these children that they're, they keep having with, by these handmaids. So, um, so then we see that Rita goes on to her place. Um, and then we see that Fred comes in to visit Serena. So they, they went to their room now and Fred comes in and visits Serena and he tells her it is, um, it's a miracle, all those babies. And Serena's just like, is it? And he was like, yeah, God's bless. Anyway, Serena, Serena kind of, it's like she's buying it, but she's not really buying it because she realizes like what, how, you know how they got those children by raping the handmaids and everything. But then, um, he tells her, um, that he, it kills her. Wait, hold on. He tells her how they are going to um, pressure the Canadians to go ahead and, and give Nicole back. And she's just wondering, is this all going to work? And he's pretty much telling her, yeah, like we're going to pressure Canada to give the um, give Nicole back. So, yeah, it's all going to work out in the in the end. So she's somewhat kind of buying what he's saying and everything. But believe you me, Fred is not doing this because he just misses Nicole. And he's, he's not doing that because of any of those reasons he's doing this because he wants Serena in his corner because it looks good to have her in his corner and she you know that looks good he doesn't want to be a commander that you know you couldn't hold a, your, your handmaid let your baby go you you're she's running out of control your house burned down and now your wife is gone like he can't have all that so he needs Serena in his corner 
So then, um, so then Fred leaves the room and then Serena pulls out baby Nicole's footprints. Remember last week she, they gave her a paper. So she kept the footprints of baby Nicole and they pulled those, she pulled those out and she's crying and everything. So then we see, um, so Judy's in the um, room with of George and of George comes in and she's getting undressed and Judy's just chat, chat, chatting away. And she's telling her, I'm sorry um, about the inconvenience of having to share your room and, uh, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then she tells you, you must be of George. And then of George, she takes off this little, because they cover their mouth there. So of George takes off her little thing. She unclips it and she look, turns and looks at Serena. And of George's mouth is why is it wired shut? Like they've clipped them, clipped her mouth shut. And Serena is like, oh, I'm sorry. Serena June is like, oh, I'm sorry. And so she turns around and she's having to cover her mouth because she is, she wants to cry, you know, that's a horrifying, like to, to look at this normal woman and you're like wondering why she's not talking to you. And then you look and you see that they've, they've shut her mouth. Like she's not able to speak. So this is like a whole different version, like of Gilead. They went, they were there. They are the extreme, extreme um, version of it um, and everything. Um, so then we see that um, Aunt Lydia sees the girl. Okay, so then the next scene we see Commander Waterford is trying to set up his TV, you know, cameras and everything because they're going to televise this prayer again. And I don't, did y'all see where they had June um, when they went to this scene? June was standing there and the, the angel's arms uh, wings were on both sides of her so it looked like she was like an angel I'm like what kind of angel is she like an envision angel but they had it like that but anyways so Commander Waterford is um, getting it all together and, and he tells Aunt Lydia because they have other handmaids there and he was like is that all you could bring and she was like they have other duties and he was like "What's what greater duty is the duty of their country or whatever so Anyways, so one of the handmaids, as they're lined up, because these are not Aunt Lydia's handmaids, these are other handmaids as well, her mask is a little down, and Aunt Lydia walks up to her, and she pulls her mask down some more, and she sees that her mouth is wired shut, and Aunt Lydia, like, she's even looking like, what the hell, and so she pulls her uh, mask back up, because I think, like, Washington is the extreme version of Gilead, and even though Aunt Lydia, you know, she's, you know, she, even she's like, wow, like y'all really took this a step far and everything. So as they're there, so they're getting this ready and Commander Waterford tells June, go up there and you're going to stand between me and, um, um, Serena. So she goes up there and she stands between them. And then as they're taking the, getting ready to take the pictures and Fred is still directing, telling people how he wants it to look, Nick comes in and Nick was looking at I was like, oh, his little trench coat and everything. I was like, okay. But so Nick comes in and of course June gets it, you know, gets excited because she gets to see Nick or whatever. And um, Fred tells him, um, he says, um, beautiful, uh, beautiful, sir. And so Fred looks at Nick, then he looks at June because Quasi Kelp as well. Fred, I mean, Fred's, you know, he wanted June, but she never wanted him like that. And he knows that. And he knows that there's chemistry, something. Well, he knows that the baby, if it's not his, it has to be Nick. That's the only other man she was around um, or whatever. So P Fred being Fred, being all petty and stuff, he tells Nick, um, go up there and take my place, like stand in my place up there so I can make sure this shot's going to look good. So Nick goes up there and um, he goes to June and he says, what's a girl like you doing in a place like this? Um, and then, then they like kind of touch hands and I'm like, I know y'all not in front of all these people. Like, I know y'all not doing this or whatever. And I'm uh, y'all just bold with it. Like, I don't miss those days of Nick and June where you always were like, stop it. Like, stop it. Y'all going to get, e you're going to get in trouble before you can even get Hannah out just because you can't keep your hands off each other. So anyways, um, so then Nick Nick stands in place and the commander's like, oh, it looks good. And then he tells Nick, okay, let me, you know, I'll take my place and thank you, son, and all that. And I'm like, he's so petty. So then um, Fred starts doing his prayer. And for the prayer, June has to kneel because once June kneels, the other handmaids kneel. 
and it's just like a show of the handmaids are in on you know are are understand their duty and they're okay with this as well even though that's not true but whatever we're we're gonna roll with it so then um so then we after all that setting done we go to the next scene so now you know the the um the what did, what, did, what am I thinking about? The video. So they've done making their news feed, sending the video and everything. So the next scene is they're back at the Wills. It's not Wills. Why do I keep on Winslow's house? They're back at the Winslow's house and they're talking. They're with all the kids. So June comes to Serena and June is really getting on my nerves at this point on this episode. Cause I'm like, I don't know why you keep trying to wear Serena down. It's not happening, but she goes to Serena and Serena is just like, She's leery of June even talking to her. So she tells, June tells her, talk to me, Serena. And Serena says, what, like, what is that? Like, you can speak if you want to. So Serena just starts telling her about how Nicole is better off in Canada. And Serena tells June that she misses Nicole. So June tells Serena Nicole is better better off in Canada. She was like, I gave her name. You know, I named her Nicole for you and all of this other stuff and Serena is just like well I trusted you to keep you know to keep my baby that you were going to be the one to keep my baby and everything anyways and Serena lets June know that seeing Nicole and actually touching her and holding her and everything changed everything and Serena's just and June tells Serena like I understand that but it changed you. It didn't change this place. If she comes back here, she's still going to have to deal with all of this. Is that what you want? She was working on her. Now, I was, at first I was like, why does she keep talking? She was working on her. And then here comes Fred. And Fred comes with the news that can, the Canada, um, the Canadian government is willing to listen to the Waterfords, but Switzerland is going to be the, play, you know, going to be the neutral mediator during it. And so Serena's like, what does that mean? And she's like, and he tells her that, you know, it's it's a step forward. It's a small step, but it's a step forward or whatever. And so June is just like, dang. And so so Serena ain't trying to hear June now. Because <laughs> she's like, oh, we're making progress? Because I think a part of Serena was thinking it, wasn't, it wouldn't happen. So she was, she's just like, oh, we're making progress now. So Fred looks at June like, I know what you're trying to do. Um, and he tells her, go get, you know, go get changed look, you know, look presentable. Cause Joan has been looking kind of rough on these episodes though. I'm just like, she's looking a little frumpy on these episodes compared to like the other ones. And I don't know if they're doing that because they're saying, oh, she had, um, um, a child. Let's not make her as crisp or anything, but like there are women who have babies and they still look put together but june is looking worn down on some of these on these episodes this season um so then they go and meet with um the 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 swiss government um the um ambassadors that they that they bring over so the waterfords come out they've had a meeting or whatever and they're like thank you for helping us resolve this and then they tell them we well we want to speak to june and they, of joseph and they're like yeah 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 we'll, we'll bring her in and they're like no we want to speak to her alone and commander wonderful was like well in our country the way our rules go like she's really not allowed to do that but they're like well we we want to like what are he gonna do like they want to like if june says it's okay and of course june is like that's fine so <laughs> Now, Serena hasn't been wanting to talk to June all episode, but now she wants to go over there and sit down beside June before June gets up and tells her, don't be stupid. And so June um, gets up and she goes in and she's walking by Fred because, you know, he's been making little snide remarks as well um, because he's getting everything he wants. He's getting, uh, just by giving her, the, Serena this baby, he's getting her to go in your corner and be quiet. Um, he's getting to move up and the rankings and everything like getting his respect back so he's just like june don't mess this up for me um so then we see that june goes in there and she tells them to dismiss i guess there were uh, recorders and she tells them like this if you want me to talk dismiss them and so they do and they ask her what she wants to be called and she says call me june and she tells them um i am the child's mother and i want her to stay in canada the, he and Commander Waterford is not the father, and they were like, we realized that because we got cassette. So I guess Luke gave the cassette tapes to the Canadian government. So they're like, we realize um, Fred is not the father. If y'all realize this, 
that's my whole point where I'm thinking that none of this matters. Because if they realize this, then why are they even having these meetings and things? So they, they're just honest with you. And they're like, listen, Gilead is very powerful. Can, Canada does not want to go up against them. They, you know, they don't want to go into a war. They have a strong military and everything. And June is like, well, what if I give you a commander and he speaks, will that be okay? Like, will you, could you, you know, explicitly guarantee that Nicole would stay in Canada? And they said, we don't, we don't know if we could do that. And she was like, well, if you can't do it, I can't give you the commander. And they were like, so the commander is like Nick, commander um, Blaine. And she's like, I can get him to speak, you know, get him to give y'all information. Cause they're like, we need some information to try to take them down. Cause right now we got nothing and, and nobody wants to go up against them in war <laughs> or anything. So then Nick is, um, so they say, but if you could get him to speak, then okay, we'll, we'll let Nicole stay. So she's like, okay, okay. Um, uh, so then she leaves out, you know, so she, that's their agreement that they have with them. So then we see, um, that Commander um, Wilson and Fred, oh, sorry, Commander Wilson and Fred are talking, y'all. So they're in this, um, they're playing pool and they're talking. And Commander Wilson is just congratulating Fred. He was like, "Listen, I heard about your household and stuff, and I wasn't too thrilled to be inviting you into my household because he he thought Fred was like he was weak or something, or he was he couldn't take care of you know." He wasn't a strong commander, he, he so he wasn't thrilled. But he said, "But now I see you got a meeting with Switzerland, and you you know you're making progress on getting your child's back going up against the government, Canadian government, and everything. Okay, you could come to Washington and make moves and everything." Which of course Fred is ecstatic about that because you know that's really all he cares about is getting you know getting higher power, higher ranking, and everything. So then he told you know the commander tells him to call me George. So then Fred goes over there to play pool, and as he's bending down to play, the commander, like, pats him on his arm, back, arm, shoulder area, you know, that area, that, like, arm, shoulder, but he's rubbing it, and I'm like, what is this? So I don't know what Fred is going to have to do when he goes to Washington, but I don't know. Anywho, the little girl, I think Polly came in at that time, and, um, Fred, um, she says, come have tea with me. And so Fred and Commander um, Winslow agree to have tea in, in that awkward moment. And then Winslow and his daughter leave. And Fred, he, you know, he's like, okay. Uh, you know, he's like, okay, okay, I'm making moves. And I'm like, Fred, you don't feel awkward? Because the way the man touched you was, was dude, Fred. Like, read body language. Breathe between the lines on what exactly you're going to be having to do when you go to Washington. But... Knowing Fred, he probably would be willing to do it because he just wants power. So then we see that um, Mrs. Winslow and Serena are talking and she tells Serena that she read her book and it was such a life changer for her because she used to be a lawyer and Fred and um, George was a lawyer and um, lawyer. And now, you know, they have a big family and Serena was like, and she was like, you could have it too. And now Serena is really looking at this like, oh, I could. Now, earlier, Fred had gave Serena the wedding band for her to wear so it makes everything look better um, to, you know, everyone around. So Fred comes over and he, because they're all playing with the kids and stuff, and he's like, um, he comes over and says, can I borrow some sugar? And Serena is looking at Fred like like she adores him, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And so he, she gives him the sugar, and he looks, and he sees she's wearing the um, wedding band and everything, so he's no, he knows he's making steps forward with her, and they share this moment, and I'm like, sis, you should be looking at your finger is missing, and but she wants this baby so bad, and now she's looking at why, well, like she was just wanting one, like she just wanted one baby. Now she's looking like we could have all of this or whatever, even though it, it's not what they, you know, even though a part of her knows it's not the best, but a part of her is like, well, if I'm going to have to live this life, I could have all this. I, you know, I want all of this if I'm going to live it. I think that's where she is right now, mindset. Y'all tell me what you think. Um, so anyways, um, a Martha tells, so then we see, see June is in bed and a Martha tells June that um, there's a visitor outside. So June goes outside and of course it's Nick. So they share that little moment or whatever and, you know, kiss and everything. And then she tells Nick, I need you to do this for, um, I need you to do something for Nicole. If you go and speak and give them information, 
they'll let Nicole stay in Canada and I need you to be her father. This is the one time you're going to be able to, to be her father and I need you to do it. So Nick, um, he agrees to it. And then the next scene, um, we see June pacing and Nick, Nick goes in and speaks to switch. We don't know what happened in that meeting, but June is pacing around and then they come outside and, um, When they come outside, the woman who, because it was three people in there. It was a man. I can't remember. It was a man, a woman. um, But with the the woman who came outside, June is like, what's going on? And the woman is looking at June like, girl, don't be, you can't get in trouble talking to me or whatever. But June is like, what? I need you to tell me what's going on. And the woman was like, Commander Blaine is not who you think. Like, we're going to continue negotiations. And she said, excuse me? What do you mean? I gave you Nick. And she says, he's not who you think he is. And June is like, what do you mean? And she was like, some people can't be trusted. And then, so then that woman leaves and she tells Serena. So so Serena comes walking through and June is like, Serena, what was Nick before? He was a driver. And she tells him he was, um, he served Gilead. And she said, how did he serve Gilead? And she said he was, I guess he fought and he served Gilead. And then Serena's so dang petty now. And she said, all that time y'all spent together, he never told you. And, you know, June don't want to hear that because she realizes that um, I don't know what Nick went in there. I don't know if he tried to go in there and negotiate and Switzerland would not negotiate with them because they. she kept saying we can't negotiate with everyone. And Nick is one of those people. So I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he tried to save Nicole and they just didn't want his want him or what. But then we, so when June finds this out, of course, June is devastated because she's like, she didn't really know who Nick was. And then we see Nick gets on like this private, like, you know how they have the soldiers go in on um, airplanes and all that private little. So Nick goes on and the soldiers are like chilling. And, but when Nick steps through, they get at attention or whatever. And he's walking through and they're saluting him like he's there. And I said, wait a minute, what kind of commander was Nick? I, the whole time I thought he was a he when he said he was gonna be commander I thought he was like Fred and and Commander Lawrence and stuff I was like oh so he's like a commander commander like of the military and stuff dang Nick <laughs> so I, I don't know what's gonna happen I don't know if we're gonna see Nick again but it does make sense because remember um earlier when he was at the when he went to the like the whole video thing that Fred was trying to do he said I went to the Winslows. And, um, and, and he sent me over here and I'm like, cause I was thinking, well, if Nick is supposed to be like a commander, I thought he was lower than Fred and him. And why, why is he able to move around so freely like this? And now it makes sense because he, he commands, he's getting the, getting the people in line and going in and killing up some people. But, it, but that's pretty much what Serena told June. Like we wouldn't even, none of this would have been possible without Nick. Like he, he was like as far as the military was he he took care of this for us he helped us you know form all of this too so i'm like well god dang anyways so then we see um so june is devastated so then we see our lydia lydia come in and she hands june um a mask and like the other handmaids there because they don't want to see that they can't speak. They make them wear their mask all the way up to their nose. So their lips are covered up so they can't see that they've sewn their lips up or stapled their lips together. And so June has to wear one now as well, but like you're lucky your, your lips aren't gone, like aren't stapled shut. Um, and so uh, she tells on Lydia, can I ask you a question? And on Lydia was like, what is it? And she says, do you want us to be silent? And Aunt Lydia starts crying. June starts crying. They're both breaking down crying. And Aunt Lydia was like, no, no. Because Aunt Lydia was like, I'm tired. I'm just ready to go home. She was like, I'm ready to go home. They're both. And she told June, and she says, but when I, you know, when I get tired, when I get like this, I think about, you know, I, if I could just protect one person or change the life of one person. Um, and you know, that's what she prays for. And she says, and she told, she looked at June and she says, I, I think about you and she and June just look at each other and they just start crying and they hold each other and everything. And it was just one of those moments where Aunt Lydia is into this, but, e- but even Washington is extreme for her, it seems like. So then 
June goes and she goes to the mirror and she's about to put on her little um, mask and everything. And she turns on Lydia and she's like, help me. Can you help me? I, I, Cause she didn't know how to, which way it went on. And so uh, Lydia helps her put it on and everything. And they just look at each other in the, in the mirror. And June is just like, okay. Um, so then the next scene we see that June is standing in front of, it is the Lincoln, you know, where he was sitting, but they've took his head off. And so, um, She's standing there and she has her mask up on her mouth. And then Serena walks up, petty self, and is like, who's silence or whatever. What a great, what a great sound. And it's like, Serena, shut it. Like, and so June is like, wow, yeah, it is. Why don't you do the same? Like, why don't you return the favor? And so then she and Serena start battling it out because um, Serena is like, I trusted you with my baby and none of this. Would, if you had just went to Canada with the baby, we wouldn't be going through this. But I, I want if you, if you're not with her, then I want to be her, with her. And June is pretty much just like Serena, you're just selfish. That's just selfish. And anyway, so then um, Serena, June tells Serena, you're selfish. You're cruel. You don't know how to love. You can't love because if you love Nicole and she was like letting her know, I named her after you. She was going to be like, they, she was going to have that part of you. And if you really loved Nicole, then you would have let her be in freedom. But no, you want to bring her back here. And June and Serena was like, well, they, you know, earlier she had told her, well, they all look happy, the other kids or whatever. And Serena, June just keeps telling Serena, but look at the world that they're going to have, you know, have to live in. But Serena doesn't care because she wants a baby. And she's just thinking about herself. And um, so Serena is pretty much like, I should have, um, I should have, you know, put rings on your mouth when I first met you. And June is like, I should have let you, let you burn up um, when I met you. And so they look at each other, you know, and they realize, OK, I hate you. You hate me. It is what it is. But before the before they hate, look at each other. Serena was like, um, I can't wait to get you out of my, I can't wait till this is over so I can get you out of my life. And June was like, you'll never be rid of me. Um, as long as you, as long as you try to have my baby, I'll always be there. I'll always, you, you know, you'll never be done with me or whatever until my children are both in safety. And so then we go to the um, last scenes of the episode, which are just June and Serena going and, um, so June, so Serena leaves and it leaves June just standing there. So then June turns around and she starts walking down. June has so much freedom. I'm like, what is going on? So June starts walking down and Commander um, Waterford starts to pray. And it's a sea of handmaids. Like the, the, um, the whole, um, memorial is just full of handmaids. And so he starts to pray and then he looks over at June because she's supposed to kneel and she won't kneel. And then he, so he starts the prayer again and June finally, and one of the handmaids looks up at June and she's looking at her and June finally kneels. And then all those handmaids kneels, kneel and he fit and he continues to pray. And June is just looking at the cross. And that's how the um, episode ended. I know it was a long review, but like it was a long, it was a episode that was full of all kinds of things. I don't know what's going to happen with Nick. Um, it's kind of messed up, but I don't know what's going to happen with Nick and everything. I'm pretty sure they're going to get that baby back. I don't even like at this point, I don't see them not getting the baby back. I think I still think Serena is going to run off to Hawaii as soon as she gets the baby back um, because she'll be like, well, at least I got one. Like, so I think she's going to run off to Hawaii. Um, some, something like that is going to they're going to try to make something like that happen. I have no idea idea but you guys enjoy the rest of your day this video is long enough um tell me what you think in the comments and um i will see you next week